Today I'm going to show you how to make a toriten, a Japanese style chicken tempura. At first glance, it may look like karaage, but it's completely different and delicious experience. I'll also share a secret to making incredibly crispy tempura that I haven't shown in any of my previous videos, so stay tuned! You can use chicken thigh meat for this recipe, but today I'll be using chicken breast meat for a healthier option. Let's cut the chicken into small pieces. Next, we'll grate some ginger and garlic. Fresh ginger has a beautiful yellowish color, like this. I used to store leftover ginger in water in the fridge, but I found out that's not the best way to do it. The ginger loses its color and flavor so easily, so I've recently started storing it at room temperature. The other day, I wanted to use fresh ginger the same day I bought it, so I made frikake rice seasoning using a large amount of ginger. What do you do with leftover ginger? I'll cut off this end piece and use it in today's soup. Sorry for the digression, but let's get back to the chicken. Add the ginger and garlic to the chicken. And season lightly. Add the sake. Soy sauce. And a pinch of salt. Mix well and let it marinate while we make a side dish. Let's make a quick pickle with this daikon radish. The sunlight is coming in differently today and the video lightning is a bit off, so please bear with me. Slice the daikon as thinly as possible. If you don't have daikon, you can use cucumber instead. Sprinkle with salt and mix well. By the way, the dietary fiber in daikon helps to regulate the intestinal environment and boost immunity. It's also very easy to digest and in Japan, it's often used as a recovery food after fasting. After a few minutes, the daikon will release a lot of water. By removing this water before seasoning, the flavor will penetrate quickly Squeeze out the water firmly with your hands and place the daikon in a bowl or plastic bag to season. I had one umeboshi left in the fridge, so I'll use that. If you don't have umeboshi, add a pinch of salt. Add sugar. And rice vinegar. We like to use the same amount of sugar and vinegar. If you prefer a more sour taste, use half the amount of sugar. Mix well to combine the seasonings and place in the fridge to let the flavor infuse while you prepare other dishes. Next, let's make another side dish. We'll make a salad with lotus root and carrots. Stay tuned for a slightly different flavor than usual. Slice the lotus root as thinly as possible. This will cook it quickly and give you a different texture than when cut thicker. This is a highly recommended way to cut a lotus root for salads. To prevent discoloration during boiling, soak the lotus root in vinegar water. Water alone is also fine. Slice the carrot thinly as well. Today's seasoning goes well with other vegetables such as cucumber, celery, and lettuce, so feel free to use your favorite vegetables. Add the carrot and lotus root to boiling water and cook until tender. About 3 minutes should be enough. We almost avoid the discoloration of the lotus root, but it turned a little black. I might have been better to add a little rice vinegar to the boiling water as well. But there is nothing wrong with the taste. 
drain the water well, and it's even better if you wipe off any excess moisture. Season while it's still warm. This will help the flavor penetrate and make the salad even tastier. Add a little sugar and soy sauce and mix well. We'll be adding mayonnaise later, so let it cool slightly. Next, let's make the soup that my husband really loved. It's packed with the vegetable and best of all, it's not typical miso soup but has a deep flavor like miso ramen. The vegetable I recommend for this are cabbage, green onions, and bean sprouts. Basically, it goes well with a variety of ingredients, so I think you can make it with any vegetable or mushrooms you have left in the fridge. Slice this extra green onion and use it as a topping for the bowl. Green onions are pungent, so soak them in water, and then wipe off the excess moisture. This is kaiware daikon radish sprout, which I will use as another topping for the bowl. It's an ingredient that can be used as a condiment like green onions. It has a slightly pungent taste. Wash it well. Since there are a lot of ingredients in the soup, I'm making it in a large pot today. I'm using about 600 ml of water, which is enough for 3 to 4 people, but it was so delicious that my husband and I had seconds and we finished it all. Cover and simmer for a while. Now let's finish the salad. Chop the hem and add it to the salad. Feel free to add your favorite ingredient, such as boiled eggs or crispy bacon. The lotus root and carrot have cooled down, so let's season them. Add salt and pepper, mayonnaise, and grain mustard. Add the ham and mix well to the finish. The combination of grain mustard and Japanese mayonnaise is addictive, so I encourage everyone to try it. Once the vegetables in the soup are soft at the bean sprout, the stuff on top is a bit of ginger and garlic. Bean sprouts cook quickly, so just bring them to a boil. Let's add the seasonings now. Add miso paste. You can use just one type of miso, but I find that using multiple types adds complexity in umami. I mix rice miso and soybean miso. Add some shantan. Use your favorite stock butter or bouillon. Add sugar. Sake. Soy sauce and oyster sauce. You can enjoy a richness and flavor similar to miso ramen without the noodles. The bean sprouts act as a substitute for the noodles, making it satisfying and perfect for a diet. Mix the seasonings well and dissolve the miso paste. I think it will be delicious if you added corn too. Cover and bring to a boil. It's time to fry the chicken. Add the flour and potato starch directly to the bowl from before. Here's a tip for making it incredibly crispy as the sparkling water. The carbon dioxide in the sparkling water evaporates during frying, preventing moisture from accumulating in the butter and making it soggy. It also makes the butter taste good even after a while, so be sure to try it. And one more tip, 
Add a small amount of oil to the tempera butter. The gluten in wheat flour becomes sticky when mixed with water. This is what makes tempera soggy instead of crispy. Adding a small amount of oil inhibits the formation of gluten, resulting in a less sticky and crispy texture. The details of the ingredient quantities are in the description, so please refer to them when making it at home. Pour a little oil into a fry pan and fry the chicken. Fry for 2 to 3 minutes per side, then flip. This chicken tempura is incredibly crispy thanks to the trick we just did with the tempura butter. And what's even more amazing is that the meat is perfectly moist and fluffy. We will make a sauce later to make it even more delicious. Now that the soup is boiling, let's crack the eggs into it. The eggs will enrich the soup and make it even more satisfying. Cover and cook for 1 to 2 minutes to set the eggs. Turn off the heat when the eggs are cooked to your desired doneness. After cleaning the fry pan, add the ingredients for the sauce. Add mirin, soy sauce, and sugar, and bring to boil. This is fine on its own, but to thicken it slightly, dissolve about half teaspoon of potato starch in water in the bowl. Add it to the fry pan little by little, stirring constantly. We don't want the sauce to be too thick, so add it little by little. In the meantime, the sauce had boiled down too much, so add it 1 tablespoon of water. This is how it turned out with a slightly thickened consistency. My husband complimented me very much that this was not too sweet and tasty, plus this silky smoothness was good. Now that everything is done, let's plate it up. The pickles have also marinated nicely. The eggs are also slightly runny and perfectly cooked. Place the toritan on a rice bowl. Garnish with kaiwa daikon and pour the sauce over it. Finally, garnish with green onion and it's done. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Thank you so much for watching our video. Please subscribe to our channel. If you are already a subscriber and would like to support our channel, Please join our membership. Membership feedback will be reflected in content creation. See you in the next video.